Self-announcing? I guess I'm self-announcing. Hey everyone, I'm Gordon Einstein. I am an attorney from Los Angeles, California, and I flew in braving Barcelona independence movements and air delays to speak today, to you today about Libra, which is Facebook's new proposed cryptocurrency. Um, and to be clear, now don't, however intriguing the film workshop is, this is more intriguing. I'm going to say that right out there. How's that for assertive? I, I, mm -hmm. So let me kind of dive in by saying I'm not an advocate for Libra. I'm not for Libra. I'm not against Libra. I just think that what Libra is proposing is fascinating from the point of view of understanding central banking, monetary policy, fiat, and where the world is sort of moving now. Um, let's see here. I got to give you some standard disclaimers. I don't work for Facebook. I'm a lawyer, but I'm not your lawyer yet. You know, you can always change that if you feel like it and want to pay me some Bitcoin. By the way, who saw that Bitcoin was up $2,000 this morning? Who's happy about that? Who's unhappy about that? And if you're unhappy, get out. Okay. Okay, so, wow, could I be any louder? Let me try to take my voice down. So, let's start from the beginning. What is Libra? Libra is Facebook's proposed cryptocurrency. It's not being issued by Facebook, but Facebook was at least taking the main point in proposing it. I think it's interesting, and I think it's an appropriate topic for democracy for all, because as we're going to get into, Libra's stated mission is to bring banking and banking-like services to the globally unbanked. And if you believe in democracy for all, if you believe in the mission that I think that this conference is getting behind, you understand that unless you have access to financial services, unless you have access to banking, there's no such thing as democracy for you. Okay? So unless you have economic democracy, you definitely don't have political democracy. And it's kind of ironic and interesting that Facebook, of all the companies on the planet, is the one pushing this democracy agenda, but it's happening. So even though I'm not an advocate necessarily for Facebook or for Libra, I'm an advocate for what they're trying to promote, for what they're trying to make happen. So let's kind of dive into this. And it's funny, this deck is actually about one week old, and it's already a little bit outdated because things are moving so quickly now with Libra and cryptocurrencies in general. Who saw the announcement this morning or yesterday about China backing up blockchain and going to implement blockchain as a core of their strategy? I know Juliet did. I'm going to call you out there. Juliet is just a mastermind in Russian and in Chinese and is ahead of the curve on everyone. So I suggest you follow her. All right, so... Libra is Facebook's proposed cryptocurrency. It's being executed, if you like, through a wholly owned subsidiary of Facebook called Calibra. Okay, so Facebook's not directly involved in Libra, supposedly. It's Calibra, right? Calibra was, is, maybe, part of what's known as the Libra Association. The Libra Association was... Again, things were moving very fast. A coalition of 28 companies, you could say, organizations that were going to join this association, and I'll dive into how this all worked and was supposed to work. The basic premise behind Libra and Calibra was that you should be able to send value, you should be able to send currency back and forth between users as easily as you would send an email or as easily as you would send a text message or a WhatsApp message. Now, call me naive, but that sounds like Bitcoin, right? Would it, isn't Bitcoin the whole idea that you can send digital peer-to-peer -peer cash without going through someone in the middle as easily as you would send a text message? Why in 2019, 11 years after the Satoshi white paper, do we need Libra? Well, who's using Bitcoin day-to-day -to, -day, day -to, -day to pay your bills? Who wants to? Now, there's always one or two people in the audience who are using it day-to-day. -day. I salute you, sir. But the last, time I tried to, the last time I tried to pay for coffee with Bitcoin, it didn't work out for me. But you're ahead of the curve. I want everyone paying for their coffee and Bitcoin. And I don't, mean, I don't mean Bitcoin Satoshi Vision. I'm glad someone got that. I want BTC. Okay. Now, this slide is outdated. 
and I love how fast this is all moving. This is what were meant to be the original members of the Libra Association, the group that was going to be creating the Libra coin and the Libra infrastructure. You have all these private equity companies. They may or may not be still involved. You have some blockchain companies. Coinbase is you know, well known. Little Facebook, little Calibra. Notice how small they make the graphic, like they're little innocent puppies. eBay, that's pretty big. You have all these payment providers, which is interesting. MasterCard, PayU, PayPal, Stripe, Visa. Did. OK? By the way, just to be clear, I'm happy to share this deck with anyone. It's not, you're welcome to take pictures. But if you add me on Facebook and LinkedIn and send me a message, I'll send you the deck. It's not a crypto deck. It's open source. OK, so I'll share. You would think that all of these payment providers would not support Libra, because the basic idea behind Libra is peer-to-peer -peer payments without a bank or intermediary. Isn't that killing Visa's business? Isn't that killing MasterCard's business? Why would these companies get behind Libra? Okay, I think the short version is that they were trying to get rid of the banks and just be able to handle all the transactions directly. As some of you may be aware, every single one of those companies has now dropped out. Okay? They dropped out, and I don't know if I had time to put a, deck, a slide in about this, but they dropped out because the US Congress threatened them and told them that they needed to drop out. Not because it's illegal, not because it violates any law, because it, but because it might threaten the US dollar. Okay, that is unheard of for a elected body, not a court, an elected body to send a letter to companies saying don't engage in this line of business because if you do engage in this line of business, we don't like this line of business and we may look at your existing business and start to regulate it more. Think how threatening Libra must be for a letter like that to go out. And of course, we got Women's World Banking, Kiva, and Mercy Corps. These are three nonprofits. Now, I don't know about you, but if you're against a cryptocurrency that's backed up by Women's World Banking, I think you're going straight to hell. I mean, come on, it's Women's World Banking. How nice is that? Plus, you have Uber and Lyft. God knows why. Don't tell me five minutes after all this. Nah, 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 nah. We're going on. Okay, who's not on here? Apple, IBM, American Express, Microsoft, banks. There's no banks. Who's also not in here? Asia. You know that little thing we call Asia? Do you see anything from Asia here? No. So we're missing China. We're missing India. Kind of hard to imagine taking care of the globally unbanked if we're missing China and India. Hmm. Let's go into that. Now, again, Libra's mission is to bring banking to the globally unbanked. This is a real issue, and it seems like there's a real problem to be solved here. This is from uh, Libra's white paper, and I'll just kind of do it by, I'll just read it. Libra's mission is to enable a simple global currency and financial infrastructure that empowers billions of people. Well, that sounds nice. If you want to dig into what Libra's about, be aware that there's two white papers. There's sort of a marketing, sorry, there's a technical white paper that's being put out by Cut Libra, not by Libra itself, and has 30 authors. I've never seen a white paper with 30 authors. It just happens that all 30 work for Calibra, and they contributed the document to the Libra Association. So when they tell you that Facebook and Calibra isn't in charge of Libra, just remember those 30 authors work for Calibra, and zero of them work for anyone else. Just a thought. There's another white paper called An Introduction to Libra, which is put out by the Libra Association. Guess how many authors are listed? Zero. Uh-oh. So this is more of a marketing document. It's repeating the idea that it's supposed to bring uh, banking services to the globally unbanked. By the way, I'm talking a little bit fast just for time limits. Is it too fast? Are you with me? Raise your hand if you can't understand me. Raise your hand if you're not going to raise your hand no matter what. Really? There's always someone who raises their hand. Oh, there's a guy. There's always one guy in the audience who does that. Just wanted to give you a chance to be famous, sir. Okay, so where did Libra come from? What, where did Calibra come from? This guy, David Marcus. I mean, look at him. He looks like a nice guy, right? I've seen him testify. By the way, I've seen this guy testify in front of the US Congress for 18 hours. I don't know if he's a nice guy, but he has the discipline of a Zen monk, okay, or Shaolin. 
you know, this guy had gotten beaten up by so many incompetent characters, and he kept his calm the entire time. He must have been on Xanax, okay? Because there's no way that I could have sat in front of the U.S. Congress, answered their stupid question for 18 hours, and Biggie this calm. Like, I think they took out his emotion chip for the day. So way back in the 1990s, this guy, and it's right there on Google Patents, came up with a patent for sending currency back and forth using mobile devices. This is before, I think before the Satoshi white paper. And, he, you know, he went to University of Geneva, which will come up relevant in a second. He started a company on this uh, patent called Zano, or Zong. They got acquired by PayPal. PayPal got, of course, acquired by eBay. Then he went on to work at Coinbase, and then he went to work on, on Facebook. And look at who's here. PayPal, eBay, Facebook, Coinbase. It's like the Libra Association is David Marcus's best friends. I think that Libra is just his patent updated for crypto. And it's worth reading his patent. It's right there on Google Patents. All right, I'm going to kind of go there, through this. I'm not going to beat this to death. But the real thing to keep in mind is, why is Libra different from Fiat? Why is it different from a stable token like Tether? Why is it different from Bitcoin? Why do we need Libra? Or what, what differentiates it? The core idea is this very last one that's all in red. Okay, Libra is backed by something called the Libra Reserve. The Libra Reserve is a pool of stable financial assets which back up Libra's value. So what is the U.S. dollar exchangeable for? Nothing. It's exchangeable for the full faith and credit of the U.S. government, whatever that's worth. Okay, what is Tether exchangeable for? Who believes that there's one dollar for each Tether out there? Okay, I assure you there's not one dollar out there for each Tether out there. Okay. What is Bitcoin exchangeable for? Nothing really except for its scarcity algorithm, which is very interesting, probably gives it its value. Libra is the first time we've had a corporate cryptocurrency that is not a stable coin. It is not a stable coin. It is not exchangeable for a basket of reserve currencies. It is backed by a basket of reserve currencies. That is this fundamental threat to the central banking system. Let's floor this idea. So when I buy Libra, when I want to get, get involved with Libra, assuming it ever launches, which God knows if it will, okay, the idea is I go to a local Libra reseller. I pay them in my local fiat, whether it's dollars or Deutschmarks, I wish, or euros. Right? I get my Libra. Then the money that I paid gets invested in the Libra reserve. The Libra reserve is a basket of reliable, we think, fiat, like dollars and euros and yen and low volatility assets, like government bonds. Okay, I don't know if you think those are volatile or not, but they're supposed to be not be volatile. It's very similar to what's known as a special drawing right, an SDR. Okay, this is something I think that's put out by either the World Bank or the International Monetary Fund, where central banks are allowed to trade amongst themselves using a basket of very similar reserve type currencies. In a way, Libra is making SDRs available to the entire world. That is a breakthrough idea. Okay, now if it's good for central banks, why isn't it good for someone in Nigeria? Well, the, the basic answer is they don't want people in Nigeria to have this power, and they're threatened by it. Maybe they should be threatened by it. Okay, Libra's not a bank. When you get Libra, the money is held basically in your wallet. It's not held by Libra, right? And where does all this Libra money go? Well, the reserve is invested, right? Once the expenses of the Libra Association are paid, the excess profit goes to, to the Libra Association members. I saw some predictions saying that they would make a trillion dollars within a decade based on this investment amount. That's a good deal. No wonder MasterCard, PayPal, Visa wanted to stay in there. Of course, they all fell out. Now, is the global unbanked system or you know, issue real? Sure. It's mostly in the global south. You know, when you go green, that's the people without bank accounts or we just don't know. Okay, here is not that they have bank accounts, it's here that we don't have information. Okay, so mostly in the global south, the issue of people not having bank accounts and not having access to financial services is real. In the United States and Europe, of course, most people have bank accounts and most people have access to the banking system. Yet where has Libra encountered the most pushback? The north. Do we really need the North to get banking services? No, we need it in the South. So maybe the pushback that's happening in the North doesn't really matter. What if Libra just launches in the South? 
What if Libra was always meant to just launch in the south? We'll talk about that in a second. Now, here's a little graph, interesting graphic. I always assumed that Facebook had most of its users in the global north. That's wrong. Of course, there's the United States because that's where it launched. But where are most of Facebook's users? India. Okay? And mostly in the global south. Now, we do have Britain. We do have the UK down here. But I think once Brexit happens, Britain will be part of the global south. Who agrees? Who got that joke? Okay, raise your hand if you got the joke. Raise your hand if you think I'm not funny. Okay, there you go. All right, now there's been two kinds of reactions to Libra. There's one saying it's as good as Ethereum, and that's an insult. Okay? This one's saying Libra resembles Ethereum more than Bitcoin. It contains all the features that make Ethereum garbage. Account model, generic ga language, gas, on-chain, blah, 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 blah. By the way, they're going to have problems with know your customer and AML, which is anti-money laundering. So here's one argument saying it's technical garbage. Here's another argument saying Libra is actually really good technically, but by the way, it's not a blockchain and therefore not a cryptocurrency. So if you can figure out how to reconcile these two positions, you let me know. I'm just a lawyer. I don't know. Okay, now I don't believe anything. Despite the fact I'm a lawyer, I don't believe things when I see it on paper. I want to go see it in person. So I went to Geneva, where, Libra, where the Libra Association is formed. And by the way, recall that David Marcus went to the University of Geneva. So I guess he's a fan of his hometown. So I went to Geneva with my lovely wife. And we looked up where the Libra Association is located. We found the address. We went there in lovely Geneva and had some coffee. OK, that address is here. That's me standing in front of it. I walked inside. That Libra Association building is a co-working space. You get that? It is a co-working space. It's like WeWork, all right? And you know what's happening with WeWork, right? Okay. I went in there. I pretended. I lied. I said, I'm looking for co-working space. They showed me all around. I don't know if I lied, because eventually I may work for, look for co-working space there, in which case, retroactively, it won't be a lie. We'll see. So I went to this building, and I went inside, and I took this photograph. These are all the tenants of this building. Libra is not on here. Who's on here? PayPal. Just PayPal. And PayPal has dropped out of Libra. OK? Makes life really interesting when you're doing presentations on subjects that change every two seconds. Whatever. OK. PayPal bailed out. This, I had to update this deck because this changed about a week ago or two weeks ago. Why did they bail out? Well, maybe they bailed out because Congress put pressure on them. I think what really bailed out is China gave them a better deal. OK, and I'm getting a nod from Juliet, who has all kinds of insider information. So you and Herbert Sim, the famous Herbert Sim, have, have advised me, and I trust you both, that there's something else going on. And he said I can quote you, and now I'm going to quote. He said I can quote him, and now I'm going to quote you, because you're nodding at me. Yes? Everyone see you're nodding? OK, good. So PayPal, the biggest PayPal processor, or big, biggest payment processor of the, in this direct internet space, has dropped out, maybe for China. OK, now let me kind of pass by this here. So Libra has fundamentally threatened U US and U European models, central banks. This is, there's two houses, you know, unlike in, unlike in Europe, the US Congress or Parliament is divided into two houses. We have the House of Representatives and we have the Senate. It's not like the European model where you have one parliament, right? So like I mentioned, David Marcus had to sit in front of these people and answer their stupid questions. Okay, prior to answering their stupid questions, they sent him a letter and they admitted something amazing in this letter. They said, and I quote, it appears that these products may lend themselves to an entirely new global financial system that's based out of Switzerland, intended to rival US monetary policy and the dollar. Okay, I can't tell if they're more offended that it's based out of Switzerland or that's rivaling the US dollar. I mean, you know, heaven forbid you do it in Switzerland. I don't know. I mean, I don't know why they're against Switzerland. But it's amazing for me that the US Congress put in writing the idea that Libra can rival US monetary policy and dollar. Think what it's like to admit that the almighty dollar is under threat by Facebook. How weak is the dollar in 2019 that they can even say that in writing? 
I mean, to me, I would not have revealed that if my life depended on it. All right? Now, everyone is challenging the U.S. dollar's reserve status. And even our friends in the United Kingdom, who we like saved from 14 wars, is now bringing up the idea that maybe the U.S. dollar should be replaced as a reserve currency by a new digital backup currency. I mean, this is the U.K. I mean, didn't we save them from getting invaded by the Netherlands or something? So, this is rough. The EU pushed back in their own way, and of course it was the French, and of course it was the Germans. Thanks, buddies. Okay? And they go, we consider, I can't even do the accent, we consider that the Libra project, as set out in Facebook's blueprint, fails to convince that those risks will be properly addressed. Here's the killer sentence. We believe that no private entity can claim monetary power, which is inherent to the sovereignty of nations. If monetary power is inherent to the sovereignty of nations, why are we all using the euro? Hmm. But anyways, France and Germany pushed back against Libra. Putin, of course, loves it. He's neutral on Libra. He's like, well, if it messes with the US dollar, it sounds good to me. You guys all have fun now. You know, meanwhile, we're gonna conquer Syria. Okay, and of course, Libra comes out and then China announces, well, duh, idiots, we've been working on this for five years and we go live tomorrow. Because, you know, that's what China always does. Okay, now, who, I think I did this before, but who loves Bitcoin? You better raise your hand. Okay, I'm a Bitcoin maximist and I put my money where my mouth is. Bitcoin is not dead. Bitcoin has not been regulated to death. I think the reason why that is, is because Bitcoin, unfortunately, has not become successful as digital peer-to-peer -peer cash. At most, for most people, it's become a store of value or an investment asset. In other words, it's become a form of digital gold, but it hasn't yet become a form of digital money. And I know your lightning argument, I see John McAfee back there, and you, know, you and I can argue all day on this stuff. But the, at the moment, Bitcoin is not being used to pay for coffee by most people. I think, in my opinion, that saved it, okay? Because if it was being used day-to-day -day to buy coffee, it's very hard to shut Bitcoin down, but God knows they would be trying. Because Libra is meant to be used for coffee day-to-day, -day, they attacked it like a bunch of ravenous dogs, okay? So I'm actually happy that for a while, Bitcoin is not being used that way because I think that saved Bitcoin and supports the idea of Bitcoin being a long-term success story. So I'm out of time, I'm done, I wanna thank you all, and let's give it up for our next honored guest.